And this is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Conan Exiles video. Today I'm going to show you how to just absolutely break everything with a zombie bug. Let's get to it. So in one of the recent patches they busted zombies and you can now equip armor on them and you can equip a weapon on them. You can also pull their weapon off of them and use it yourself. If you take a look there, I can equip the weapon and do their animation. However, you don't want to do that because the weapon is absolutely terrible for you. It deals 45 damage. It only has 10% armor pen, but that does give you the information on zombies average stats. Uh, these are tier three zombies that I'm using. So that is their attack weapon damage. However, because of this bug, it allows you to make absolutely insane super zombies. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm using simple tier three zombies. These were all spawned from tier three archers. As you can see here, just went over to Sephiroth and grab them out of there. The spec that I am using, only thing that really matters here is this right here. So you want to take all of this, max out authority, and you want to choose well-trained, and then you want to corrupt it all the way up to the third perk. Now, if you really want to be unkillable, you can go through and max out vitality and grab glutton for punishment. The reason we corrupt this is because of devour and the amount that they heal you is based off the amount of damage that they do. And since we are drastically going to boost the ever-loving crap out of their damage, they are going to heal you for a lot. That combined with glutton for punishment will make you almost unkillable. But being unkillable is not necessary to turn them into absolute insane killing machines. The armor that you want to wear is the Skellos Cultist Master Set crafted by a tier 4 armorer. That's going to give you plus 10 to follower damage on each of the pieces here. This is just going to min-max your damage as much as possible. Then I've got a food buff to give me follower damage and I have the Purple Lotus Potion to give me follower lower damage as well. For the food, I just ate a cooked dogfish. You can see here, it gives you plus 12 to follower damage and bonus to charisma, but that doesn't really do anything. They're just easy to get. When your followers, the armor that you want to put on them is the Redeemed Legion Helmet, the Void Forged Dragon Ribs, the Hyperborean Slaver Bracers, Hyperborean Slaver Loincloth, and the Hyperborean Slaver Boots. On the Exiled Lands, this is the best armor you're going to get that's going to boost their strength damage as much as possible. The weapon we are going to use here is the Tender now, the only reason I'm using a mace is because when they do the heavy attack, they attack twice. Once up, once down, does two attacks and can do upwards of six to 800 damage, depending on how much armor the target has. There are other weapons that do higher damage per single hit. However, when they pull this combo off and they do it relatively frequently, it's a huge burst of damage, especially when you have three of them doing it. They don't stagger, so the hyper armor doesn't really matter and they won't ever stack any sunder on the target because they attack once and then stop. Now you're going to have a slight issue getting this on them and getting them to attack with this all the time and I'm going to show you how to take care of that. In order to take care of that they have more than one weapon on them that you need to pull off. So we have this zombie here. What I'm going to do is just have her follow me. Now you need to find a target. Any old target will do. You just need something for your zombie to attack and I advise only doing this one at a time. Go in, clear a camp off, leave one or two people park your zombies outside and bring them in one at a time is probably an easiest way to go about doing this. So you need to have them attacking something and then you're going to spam click the weapon and hold down shift and you should be able to pull all of the weapons off of them. There are four. So I'm just going to spawn in a test dummy here and allow the zombie to attack the test dummy and I'm just going to click this and you'll see I've got three and there's four. And now you know you've done it when they start punching. Once they start punching, they don't have any more of these on them. If you don't pull all of these off, they'll rotate through them with the mace in their hand. So they'll attack with the mace, then they'll attack with some of these, then the mace will show back up, they'll attack with the mace. We don't want that. We want them to only attack with the mace. So if you do this, just have them attack something, get in their inventory, shift, and just spam click main hand area there. You will pull all four of these weapons off. You should get two left slashes that thrall slash L is the left attack. You'll get one right attack, which is the thrall slash R and then the thrall slash down R. Once you've gotten all of those slash weapons off of them, they will be good to go. Then you can equip the mace on them. After that, you want to equip them with the armor, put some brimstone on them for healing and then give them an elixir of might and a salted pork. Then you want to have them follow you. As you can see, once you do that, they gain plus 22 each of their stats, giving them an absolute ridiculous amount of 
of health. Look at that, 21,000 on a tier three, 15,000 from 9,000. Absolutely insane. This one went from 13 to 18. The 20 to each of their stats, he had negative three on that one, but that doesn't really matter. The 20 to each of their stats is just absolutely ridiculous. I also re-rolled each of these for max health. You could re-roll them for max health or you could re-roll them for max strength for more damage. That is your choice. Now let's see what kind of damage they do on our test subject scorpion over here. Now another bonus to corrupting your stats over here or your attributes is you get the frenzy which further increases the amount of damage that they do when you attack. So you definitely want to get in there with an attack every now and then to keep them buffed up. But I'm going to let them hit me or let this hit me here and you can see look at them heal me. Look at that. It's insane. It's absolutely busted. Watch how quickly they absolutely rip through this thing too. They're gonna destroy it in the quickest amount of time you've ever seen. And look at the damage that they do that's popping up there. Look at that, 474, three something, 303, 401, 303. And they will do that attack there, and that's the reason that one that you just saw there where we did the up-down attack, that's the reason that we use the mace because it stacks damage extremely fast, and this scorpion is pretty much dead. That was insane. Now, because I know you all love to see it, let's take a look at the arena champion. All right, here we go. We got the arena champion. We're just going to uh, hit her here and keep her staggered. Actually, you know what? Let's not stagger her. Watch, watch this. Look at the, I mean, she has a ton of armor, but uh, yeah, they're still tearing her down so quick that it's absolutely insane. She can't even figure out how to equip her weapon and she's just getting absolutely wasted. And there we go, no more arena champion. Now, for you Sipta people, we can squeeze even more damage out of these bad boys. So for Sipta, you wanna run the Frost Giant's Helmet, the Black Knight Pauldron, the Hyperborean Slaver Bracers, the Black Knight Tacit, and the Frost Giant's Boots. As you can see, all of these give plus eight to strength weapon damage, except for the Hyperborean Slaver Bracers, as opposed to this setup here, where the only thing that is giving them the additional 8% is the Void Forged Dragon Ribs and the Redeemed Legion Helmet. You could run the Void Forged Dragon Ribs from Sipta as well if you wanted to. Your other option that is a pretty good one for Sipta is to run the Great Sword of the Grey Ones on them. This thing does 78 damage with 22% armor pen. I'm not even going to put any kits on it. I'm just going to show you the amount of damage this thing puts off without any kits on it. I do have the Master Weapon Fitting Kit on the Tenderizers, giving them 68 damage with 40% armor pen, but they are going to hit so hard, it's not really gonna matter. So we're gonna summon the Scorpion Queen for this one. We're gonna tell him to attack. The Scorpion Queen has quite a good bit of armor at 600, and you can see it doesn't really matter. <laughs> They're just destroying her. Let's get them their attack damage bonus from being buffed. 484, 483, 404. I didn't even switch their armor, remind you. I did not switch their armor. Look at them heal me. I am getting glutton for punishment healing as well, but they are also healing me for an absolute insane amount and absolutely destroying this. But you can see they attack slowly with the, the well, whatever you give them. The reason I suggest the maces for exile lands is because you do get that double attack on occasion, but when they're hitting for four and 500 damage there uh, on Sipta, you're probably gonna be pretty good with the great sword of the gray ones. It's gonna be relatively easy for you to farm with these as well. Look at that, they just, that was just sad. So of course, like I said, it is possible to squeeze a little bit more damage out of them if you put them in this armor. I'm not gonna do it because I think I got my point across. This bug is absolutely ridiculously broken. I can't imagine what it's like to play on a PvP server. Everybody's probably just running around with these. However, I'm sure many people didn't realize you could pull four weapons off of them and now they're gonna know. Hopefully this lights a fire under Funcom's butt to fix this stupid bug that should have been hot fixed within a day or two. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you want to see some absolutely insane builds, check out the link that is on the screen now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.